the administrative distance. So we have these two types of protocols, link state distance vector, protocols fall into them. So far I've told you about several routing protocols. We had our exterior gateway protocol, which was BGP. We have our interior gateway protocols that I talked about, which were EIGRP, OSPF, ISIS, and RIP. Okay, so for our interior gateway protocols then, if we are running multiple routing protocols on our router, which I told you already, I, I, there is definitely situations where you have a need to run multiple routing protocols on your devices, the router needs a mechanism to determine which route is the most trustworthy. So if I'm running OSPF and ISIS and EIGRP and RIP, and they're all advertising the same networks, which route do I add to the routing table? Well, that's where the administrative distance comes in. The administrative distance tells the router which route is the best route to add to the routing table. So, if the route is directly connected, that route has an administrative distance of zero. Zero is the best administrative distance. Static routes have a default administrative distance of one, which means that they are the next best route. There's some other route types in here that I'm not going to cover yet because I don't want to overload you with information. But the next type we need here, or the next level up of route, is a dynamic route then. And the dynamic route for EIGRP has an administrative distance of 90. So it is much less trustworthy than a static route, but for this chart, it is the most trusted routing protocol as far as adding routes to the routing table. OSPF is next on the list with an administrative distance of 110. ISIS is next with 115. And down here on the bottom is RIP with 120. Now, I already told you RIP is slow and clunky and cumbersome. So we do put that towards the bottom of the list. So those routes are added last. And then Cisco came up with the order for EIGRP coming first because it wants you to have the EIGRP or Cisco proprietary routes in its routing table before the non-proprietary and open source OSPF and ISIS. Now, I already said that EIGRP is now an open protocol, but this happens a lot. A lot of organizations will publish their private proprietary protocols as open source in hopes to get other people to implement them. But what ends up happening actually is it just ends up being a marketing ploy to say, yeah, it's published out there. No one's implementing it. At any rate, so the administrative distance is our first line of defense when building the routing table to determine which route, get at, which route gets added to the table. The second one is the metric. So the metric is going to determine the best path. So let's, let's look at an example. Let's say we have a route to network 10.0.0.0/24. And we learned about those in three ways. We learned about it through EIGRP, through OSPF, and through RIP. So we, we've learned about it through three ways. That network 10.0.0/24, the EIGRP route is going to get added to the routing table. But now let's say there are, t in EIGRP, we have two paths to network 10.0.0/24. How do we choose which route to add to the routing table when there are two paths to the same network? And the question there is, we use the metric. 